What we're doing today was based off of your feedback, everybody. That's right. It was based completely off of your feedback. If you're not aware, overnight I put up a poll. Um, for the first time ever, this was on streampoll.tv. I've never used this third-party service slash website before to do an online poll. I was very curious to see how it would turn out. Um, and what I can tell you is, number one, basically there was way less trolling voting. Every time that I do one of these public polls, either on Twitter or on Straw Poll, it seems that there's an element of someone could be like bot, bot the poll. You know what I mean? Like use bot accounts or whatever in order to skew polls that I do. Because I've noticed this where all of a sudden there'd be like an insane increase in votes out of nowhere, like a spike that would skew the poll one way or another. Um, I didn't see that until the very end of this poll on Straw Poll, or excuse me, on Stream Poll. In fact, overnight, the, here was the choices, by the way. The three choices for what I was going to play today was Sekiro New Game Plus, uh, which honestly doesn't seem like many people are interested in. I'm surprised because some people had said they wanted to see me fight the other bosses uh, at the end of the game that I didn't fight. But apparently, um, apparently there's not that much of a desire because people are just like, meh, don't really care about Sekiro. I guess I beat it once. I destroyed the ending, which people weren't expecting. And when I did, that killed all hype for the game because they were like, man, Phil beat it so easily now probably he's going to defeat the entire game of new game plus so easily so now they don't want to see it anymore so if anything what you see here is it looks like people just wanted to see me rage at the game and that was it once the rage died out because i got better at the game and i destroyed the ending people lost interest in the game altogether <laughs> go figure right okay so that did not really get a lot of votes plus you know we got to keep in mind that i've been playing Sekiro for you know almost a month so i get it okay the other options were donkey kong country 3 and World War Z, Donkey Kong Country 3, obviously the third in the trilogy of Donkey Kong platforming games. And it's a game that I definitely wanted to play um, because I played the first two last month. But at the same time, World War Z released yesterday. This is a game that came out of nowhere and apparently is kind of like a co-op zombie survival game in the style of Left 4 Dead. Except I don't think it's, I think it's third person, not first person. Um... So, what I basically did is I was listening to people's feedback, and it seemed like World War Z feedback was a mixed bag. Some people like it, some people hate it. Apparently it's fun, but at the same time it has flaws. Um, it is a $40 release. It's not a full $60 retail release or anything either. Um, so, I didn't know what to do today. So, I did this poll overnight um, on stream streampoll.tv. And the poll went like this. I think it was like maybe like 15% for Sekiro New Game Plus. Um, and then it was like, I think I want to say like 40% um, or 30% for Donkey Kong Country 3. And then the rest, which was like a resounding like 50%, was for World War Z. So it was like this all night long, okay? I wake up this morning, the poll is also the same. And I'm like, okay. So I post up. On Twitter at like 9.30. Well, it looks like we're playing World War Z today, you know, per the, the results of the poll. So I hope the game is good and it ends up being fun like Left 4 Dead was. So I buy the game. I install the game. I get all ready for today's stream. And then I look at the poll last minute and it says, oh, it's a tie. I'm like, now wait a minute. Now wait a fucking minute. I announce on Twitter that World War Z won the poll. I buy the game. And I install it. All of a sudden, within like 30 minutes, hundreds of votes come in for Donkey Kong Country 3. Bullshit. That's what I say. It's called bullshit. Apparently, you know, whoever whoever these, these parties are who mess with my polls to try to skew results or whatever, um, apparently saw my tweet about World War Z winning and said, oh, I want to fuck with Phil. So they ran to the poll and put in like over 100 fake votes to game the poll. There's no way. There would have been over 100 votes in 30 minutes when I had already announced a winner. It's just horseshit, okay? So sadly, what I what it looks like to me is that even this place, this straw poll, excuse me, streampoll.tv, even this is not immune from trolling when it comes to polling. Um, it just seems like there is no good place to do a public poll at all. Um, that it just seems like no matter where you do it, people can fuck with the poll. So... <clears throat> it really seems like the only place you can have a controlled environment is your own website. Like, for example, thekingofhate.com, I do a poll on the forums, right? That can be a controlled environment because it requires you to register your account, and you're not going to have someone putting in 400 registered, you know, bots 
in order to try to skew a pole over there. You see what I mean? It's too much work. Sadly, though, I know what would happen if I tried to do one of these polls on the kingofhate.com, you'd probably get like 30 people voting. That's it. As opposed to this poll I did overnight, supposedly I had over 400 people who voted. You see what I mean? Um, so that's always the problem with trying to do polling in a controlled environment is because you have to jump through hoops to do it, i.e. register for a forum or, or whatever, um, way less people will do it. So for now, I'm, I'm happy with the result. We're going to play World War Z um, today. We're going to check it out. But, you know, for more serious things, like for example... Um, for example, coming up, if we hit the subscriber goal for this month, I'm going to be doing what's called a viewer's choice event. And if you're not aware, uh, the viewer's choice event is going to be where everyone is going to be able to nominate and vote on games as long as we hit the subscriber goal of 600 subs for this month, which by the way, we're on an upward trend. Subs are going up every day, which is a good thing. Um, so... If that's the case, I think I need to do that in a controlled environment. I just can't have people willy-nilly voting and, and skewing polls and shit. So, for that event, I'm probably going to require, if you want to nominate and then vote on the games for that viewer's choice special event, you're going to have to register for my forums, and you're going to have to, uh, you know, you're going to have to post up there. You see what I mean? Or vote there. But, for these public polls, um... I think I'm just going to do them, you know, I don't know, random. Maybe I'll just do go back to Twitter. Because, like I said, this stream poll seemed to work. And then all of a sudden, last minute, over 100 votes coming out of fucking nowhere within 30 minutes, which is complete horseshit. So, obviously, it's nothing. No one is safe, as they say. Um, no matter where you hold these public polls, people have found ways to fuck with them. So, it is what it is. Okay. So, anyway, getting back on topic. So, today, per, per your votes, we are going to be checking out World War Z. Um... So I've heard that basically this game is okay if you play it with AI, but that the AI can basically be pretty stupid and not do certain objectives that you need to progress in each stage. So really, ideally, what you need to do is team up with humans. Of course, you guys know whenever I team up with humans, people troll them. And what's going to end up happening is more than likely people will message the pe randoms who I'm teaming with and say, Are you afraid that's Dark Side Failure playing with? And he's a scammer and he's a pedo and he's a masturbator and he's this and that. You know, and then they get all these pop-ups because, you know, the common player is not a streamer. The common player is not like me. So they probably got all their pop-up messages on and everything. And all of a sudden, they're going to get random messages from fucking assholes spamming them, saying that you're playing with Dark Side Fail. Blah, 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 blah. And it basically just makes it a bad time because then they might get on the mic and talk about it. And it just derails everything. So <clears throat> it's basically kind of a trade-off. I could try playing this game with AI and see how it goes. I don't know how it's going to go. It could be pretty shitty. I could play it with randoms, but if I do that, I have to mute the mic. I just have to because you know that's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. Like, that would be the two options. Either playing with the mic muted or um, doing uh, just with AI. And you know what? When I played, I remember when I played uh, Left 4 Dead um, back in the day. It was kind of the same thing. Not that people would troll the way that they do today, but... You'd get a lot of annoying people uh, randomly on the mic who just like would not either would wouldn't communicate in a way that is is anything productive, or they would basically have shit going. Like, they got music playing in the background. There's a baby fucking crying. There's a wind tunnel behind them, which is really just a fan blowing right into their mic. And you know, it's kind of back in the day. You know, it wasn't that big of a deal. You just mute everything, right? So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um. We'll see how it goes and go from there. And of course, Bailey and Tufo completely ignoring what I just said. He says, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Not everyone is a troll. I didn't say that they're trolls. I'm saying if you're just a random person, you don't know anything about Dark Side Phil. You never heard of him, right? You never heard of this guy. And you're playing World War Z random with a random team. And you're playing the game with some people. And all of a sudden, you get blown up. Your inbox starts getting pegged with in inbox in messages. You're playing with Dark Side Phil. He's a nasty person. He's this. He's that. All the bullshit slander that people always say about me. Or you're going to obviously bring it up, right? You're like, wow, my inbox just got fucking destroyed by a bunch of people saying stupid shit about someone I'm playing with. What is this nonsense? And then you might start reading it. And that's exactly what's happened in other games that I've played. And it completely derails everything. So it's not that people are trolls. It's that the trolls harass the people. And then the people react appropriately. And that's what happens. Okay? So it has nothing to do with, oh, no, everyone's a troll. That's just a stupid statement. 
I didn't say that the people would be trolls, that they're going to get harassed. So the best way to go about it is just to leave it muted. So if they, this does happen, there's zero impact on the game because I'm not going to hear any reaction because it's muted. You see what I mean? <clears throat> okay. All right, so we'll see how it goes today. Now, from what I'm going to understand, this game has four separate mini campaigns, much like Left 4 Dead did. If you guys remember, Left 4 Dead had the same kind of deal. It had like... um. Uh, you know, a campaign in the city streets, a campaign at a carnival, you know, a campaign out in the in the in the woods. I remember those, um, and they were very fun. It was very unique to have those kind of campaigns because it gave variety to the game. If you remember, each campaign had phases. We start off fighting certain zombies, and you get into a certain area, you get weapons and stuff, and then oh no, here comes a big monster zombie you have to defeat, you know, like a boss zombie, and then there'd be waves of, of enemies and stuff to survive. And it was very tense and very fun and interesting. Um, so we'll see how this goes if it is really four mini campaigns. Now, someone said, if you're good at the game, you could beat it in like one sitting. So I could beat all four campaigns in one sitting. I mean, that's not surprising. Left 4 Dead was the same. If you remember, Left 4 Dead, you could probably play beat in like four hours as long as you were, you were beating every campaign surviving. Um, but apparently what this game is really about is replayability where you can level your characters up through surviving and getting new levels, new new abilities and, and items and stuff, and then taking on the harder difficulty levels where it really ramps stuff up and stuff. So we'll see. You know, this seems like an interesting premise for a game. I don't know how well it's going to translate into a longevity for the stream. Um, it's probably good, at least good for one, one session, and if it's good enough, maybe I'll play it again this weekend. But I don't know, being from what people are describing it to me, if this is going to be anything that has legs and that you guys are going to want to see me play, you know, in the future... Besides maybe one or two sessions. Um, <clears throat> I guess we'll have to see. Okay. I mean, I was 40 bucks. Um, and so, you know, 40 bucks for a game like this. Ugh, I hope that it has some kind of longevity. At least it wasn't a full 60. But at the same time, dropping 40 bucks on a game that I may only play once or twice is kind of a... Ugh. It's demanding. Especially with, you know, the way things are going with me. But I had scenes financially and everything. I don't have a lot of, you know, disposable income. So, I basically got to do my best to, uh, you know, get something out of this game. I hope it's good. I hope you guys like watching it. I hope I enjoy playing it. And I hope maybe this is something I play at least another one to two times. So, at least we get something out of it. The bottom line is, next week, we got Mortal Kombat 11 and Days Gone. And once those are out, probably this game will be just a, an afterthought and never think about it ever again. Um, and that's fine. Really, what I'm looking to do is have something right now to kill some time until next week. Um, and that's good, so we'll see. We'll see how today goes, all right? Um, then tonight, I'm going to be doing a Minecraft stream, um, and it's going to be a two-hour Minecraft stream later tonight. What are we doing in Minecraft tonight? We're going to be exploring underwater for the first time ever because I finally have the ability to do so. I finally have a full diamond armor set that has all these special abilities that I enchanted it with, and a few of the abilities allow me to respirate underwater Obviously, I can't go infinitely, but it's going to definitely allow me to go down there and do more stuff. And I'm interested in looking what's underwater and also is there like underwater temples. Because people have told me about these underwater temples that are really cool. They have great loot and they're exciting. It's like a dungeon. And I've never been able to check one out ever. Okay? So, that's going to be fun. It's going to be something different in Minecraft. So, hopefully you guys will be here tonight around 6.45 p.m. Two hours of Minecraft. Okay? Um, I'm off tomorrow. That's my day off. But I'll be back on Friday with... Phoenix Wright, yes, I am going to do one more major Phoenix Wright stream. Only one more. Uh, and what I mean by that is after that, Phoenix Wright will basically make it into the mix as a late night stream. I don't want to keep doing it as a mainstream of four hours of me talking constantly. It kills my voice. And quite frankly, I did it yesterday and it was fun. But I was like, man, there's no way I could do this like often. You know, this is something that I have to do maybe every once in a while. So that's going to be Friday. One more major stream of Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. Four plus hours of voice acting, okay? <clears throat> um, then on Friday night, I'm going to be doing Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Blackout. Um, it's been a lot of fun playing Blackout recently for a couple reasons. First of all, because they added a sledgehammer, and the sledgehammer is incredibly fun to play with. You can insta-kill a lot of people, or maybe it's a two-hit. It's so cool to sneak up on people and go whack, take them out. But I've also been doing pretty good recently, and this, the Black Ops, uh, Black Blackout streams have been quite fun with interactions, but also with me, you know, basically I got to the point where I can pretty much get close to winning almost every time I play this. So that should be fun. That's Friday night, okay? Um, 
Then Saturday, I don't know what I'm doing. And the reason I say that is I don't know. I, I could be more World War Z if we really like the game today and it seems like, oh, let's do some more. I could play it again on Saturday. Or I could start up Donkey Kong Country 3. Or I could do Sekiro New Game Plus. So I really don't know what I want to do uh, on Saturday. Basically, I have three days, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, okay? Three main gameplay streams that I need to fill. And I'm not really sure what to do for these streams. I'm not sure what's going to interest people for three days. Because on Tuesday, we got Mortal Kombat 11. And once that's out, that's it. That's going to trump everything. That's going to be the main gameplay streams for a bit. And, you know, I'm going to be checking out all the characters in Mortal Kombat 11 doing the campaign, you know, story mode, the crypt. It's going to be a ton of content. If you remember, the last two Mortal Kombats had so much content in them that it ended up lasting weeks. And I get the feeling this is going to be the same deal with Mortal Kombat 11. But I need something up until then. You see what I mean? Um, so I guess we'll see. Okay? I guess we'll see. What, what, what's going to happen this weekend? Will it be more World War Z? Will it be Donkey Kong Country? We'll see. Maybe I will do Donkey Kong Country uh, for a couple days there, depending on how things go. All right? Fair enough? Okay. So there you go. That's the rough schedule, everyone, for the next week. I hope you you like that. Um, it should be enjoyable for everyone. I certainly hope that you guys um, will come by the streams and hang out with me. Um, now we move on to the plug segment, the shameless plug segment. For those of you who like the daily live streams, the fact that I stream so much and I put up all my archived streaming gameplay over on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, in long form format, an hour or plus long videos. Um, if you enjoy all of this and you want to see it continue and you want to support my efforts to keep doing this, um, there are many ways that you can contribute. First, you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil, where your monthly pledges um, earn you personal perks. And these perks are pretty good. For example, you get premium forum access that will give you priority to nominate and vote on games for events. In particular, this upcoming Viewer's Choice event, patrons will have priority to nominate and vote games for them. All right. Um, you could get a private Q&A video made. You could get your questions for answered for sure on my bi-monthly Q&A show, Ask the King. Which, by the way, incidentally, Ask the King should be coming up in May. I forgot to write it on my calendar because I'm an idiot. But it is. Uh, it should be coming up in May because we just did one at the end of March. So yeah, so the end of May which should be the next episode. Uh, so give it a look. All the details are up there. Patreon.com forward slash DarkSideFill. And thanks to anyone who supports me via Patreon. Um, I have a Teespring store where I sell all kinds of fun merchandise. T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, all kinds of stuff. Give it a look. Anything you buy from my Teespring store helps me out directly and you get a cool collectible. By the way, they're very high quality stuff. I have owned some of the T-shirts for over two years and they haven't worn out or faded at all. In all the times that I've worn them on stream and washed them. So that attests to the quality of the stuff that you get from over there. Okay? Fair enough? Okay. Um, now, if you're here live on the stream. Okay? If you're here live on the streams. And if you are wanting to maybe do some interaction. You want to get a, a shout out for your contributions. You can do so. If you either cheer with bits subscribe to the channel or tip me live during today's stream i will give you a verbal shout out um which is pretty awesome just please keep it positive and please don't bring up you know negative stuff no insults no bringing up detractor memes no trying to derail the chat with drama that kind of crap we don't allow around here we're here to have a chill fun stream right um as you can see we have a, a stream stats leaderboard at the top of your screen where I will give extra credit to those who are either the top cheerer or top tipper of the day. They'll be up there for extra recognition. In addition to that, we actually have a cheering leaderboard that's integrated right here into Twitch's chat. And that auto-updates for those who cheer and are the top 10 cheerers of the week. Okay? Um, as I mentioned already, we're working toward the subscriber goal this month of 500... Excuse me. 600 subs. We're currently at 502. Actually, that might have gone up. And so before I end the pre-stream today, I will actually check on that to see if it actually went up or not, okay? I think it did. So, um, so yeah, this should be, uh, this should be fun. I love interacting with all of you and giving you credit for your contributions. Thanks to anyone who does. Just FYI right now, um, cheering, subbing, or tipping are all great ways to support me and they all, you know, help out. There's nothing, nothing that's preferred over anything. Anything that you do to contribute helps out right now okay fair enough all right so let's go ahead and let's give shout outs to people who have contributed all right i appreciate it very much um 
voice. Chestnut will not stay still. Chestnut, just me doing new pre-stream for the past few minutes, has fallen on my shoulder three times. Chestnut is like, you know, very jumpy and antsy today. <laughs> All right, let's do some shout-outs, everybody. Okay, let's get started here. So we start off today with, oh my God, if it'll work, my stupid laptop. All right, we start off today with Drunk Mike Tyson, who basically said two really stupid things in his cheers. The first is, what are your thoughts on the furry community? I have no thoughts on it. I don't care. And Drunk Mike Tyson also said, congrats on getting married. Should we expect a baby on the way marathon? No, because number one, we're not having kids. And number two, I wouldn't run a marathon for it. But thanks for being stupid. All right. Now we start with people who actually cheered during today's stream. Uh, and we start off with Ugly and Proud Gaming. He did a 100-bit cheer. He said, oh, shit, this game is dope as hell. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for that, Ugly and Proud Gaming. Uh, the last Rambo did a 100-bit cheer. He says, the new 3.0 for Smash Ultimate is released today. Containing Joker for Persona 5, the Memento stage, a stage editor, and a video editor. Joker and Mementos are free if you bought the season pass. Would you play it? No, because I didn't buy the season pass. And quite frankly... Uh, I am not going to spend any more money on Smash Brothers. I actually talked about this on last night's stream. The Smash Brothers hype has completely and utterly died. This was a game that was white hot at the end of last year because there was no other games out. And let's face it, the game's entertaining. The game's fun. has a wide variety of characters. And it's always cool to see them beating each other up. But after about two weeks, I'd say, all the hype, the mainstream hype for Smash died. It still has tons of hype in its mainstream community. Meaning, you know, if you're a Smash player or you're into competitive Smash, sure, it's still hype. But outside of that, you know, most people had seen Smash and what it had to offer within the few first couple of weeks. And if you actually remember back in February, Piranha Plant released, and I tried Piranha Plant on a stream. I actually really liked Piranha Plant, and I was getting wins with the character, but the stream was dead. No one showed up. No one was contributing. It was basically like people didn't want to see this game anymore. And at that point, I was like, well, honestly, I'm glad that I learned that now because I was considering buying the season pass, but there's no point. People don't care. And the bottom line is people just don't, don't seem to care. I've had very few people who have asked me to play more Smash um, since then. Like, no one said, gee, are you ever going to play Smash again? No one. No one cares. So, no, I'm not going to drop any more money into Smash to play a single character in a single stage. And You know, yeah, maybe they'll add other characters in the future. But quite frankly, I'm not a competitive Smash player. I understand that community. I like that community. I understand, you know, that uh, there's comp competition to it. I've seen competitive Smash, and it's quite entertaining. I'm not one of those players. I'm not into it that, that much. And so I don't think it's worth it to drop any more money into the game. Okay. Okay. Shout out to Real Talk Mod Me, who cheers as you can play World War Z by yourself with the AI. The AI is actually pretty good, but they have flaws when it comes to doing objectives or helping teammates when swarm. I recommend playing with at least one human control player. Also, the game has multiple classes and characters that change depending on the map. But it's definitely a zombie game of the Left 4 Dead genre. The game is definitely worth 40 bucks. Well, thank you for that little summary. Um... Very much Real Talk Mod. We appreciate that. Ratio91 has subscribed for 10 months. This is just two more months for the new crown. Happy to support the Darksiders. Thank you very much, Ratio91. Uh, an anonymous gifter gifted a sub to Sine Bolton. Congrats to Sine Bolton. And thank you for whoever the anonymous supporter is. I appreciate that. Eternal Napalm cheered. He says, did you hear the confirmed news about PlayStation 5? 8K graphics, ray tracing, and backwards compatibility with the PS4. Um... I'm going to be very honest. Two of the things you just mentioned to me, I don't give a shit about. Both 8K graphics and ray tracing, I don't I don't care. And here's why. On the current gen of consoles, all right, the current gen of consoles, they can support up to 4K. They can support all these over-the-top graphical things. And quite frankly, games aren't really designed for them. Just being very honest here. um, You know, it, the, the bottom line is, Modern consoles promise the world and they don't really deliver because the game developers are really who determines what the console is going to do, not the console developer. You could put the biggest, baddest hardware inside your console, but unless a console, a game developer actually wants to make a game that's going to utilize that and really show it off, it doesn't matter. And quite frankly, I, I have to say it, this current console generation of Xbox One and PS4 has not really impressed me. Can you really tell me? In what giant leaps and bounds we've seen in gaming this console generation versus the last one. Because honestly, I can't think of anything. Yes, there's been more detail in the graphics. And yes, I'd say more open world games have become um, a little bit more prominent. Because now it's easier to generate these open worlds, right? But outside of that, um, 
I really don't see the point. You know what I mean? Like, I, like there hasn't really been games that take advantage of anything of these new, this next console gen at all. So, now you're telling me the next console gen is going to double the resolution again. It's going to ray tracing. I know all about ray tracing. I know all about the fact that when you enable ray tracing, pretty much it kills your frame rate. Um, now, of course, if you have the ins absolute highest end possible PC rig, maybe not. But <clears throat> everyone knows ray tracing looks great and also ruins your frame rate. If most modern games don't run above 30 frames per second on consoles, do you really want to turn on ray tracing? You see what I mean? And again, I got to say, um, if game developers were up to the task of developing games for this with this technology that's in the consoles and they did a good job at it, then I would say, great. I'm super pumped for 8K and ray tracing and all of this. The bottom line is they don't. They seriously don't don't really help. It, you know they don't they don't put out the they don't put the effort in to make it so that all these capabilities of the consoles are used. Um, and you know I'm not necessarily blaming the game developers because it's a lot to do with the publishers and rushing a game to market. I mean, half the games that come out in the modern era aren't even fucking finished when they're sold to the to the consumer. They get patched for three fucking months before they even function properly. You see what I mean? So this modern era of gaming knowing this, do I care that the hardware of the PS5 is going to be so much better that it's going to have these abilities? No, I don't. I actually don't at all. Um, I don't really feel that this current console generation that we got out of our consoles, what we were promised, and especially for the amount of money that we dumped, because a lot of us bought a Gen 1 console and then somewhere along the line had to upgrade. I had to. My Gen 1 PS4 was falling apart. And it was only through the generosity of viewers that I ended up getting a PS4 Pro last year. Um, and quite frankly, even with the PS4 Pro, I don't see. Like, Sekiro barely ran at 30 frames per second. It was dipping under there. And it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of frustrating. This current generation, which you would think is supposed to be great, has not been so great, in my opinion. Um, you could disagree, and that's okay. But for me, my personal experience... I haven't really been bowled over or impressed too often. Um, the few times when I was really impressed with graphics, sadly, the game would suffer for it. Like, for example, The Order 1886 was one of the most amazing graphical games ever, and it was a piece of shit. There's very few exceptions. I would say probably, you know, God of War last year, um, Red Dead Redemption 2. You know, there's been a few games that basically have had amazing graphics, but also a ton of quality gameplay in them. <clears throat> so, um... You know, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens with PS5. Now, one of the things that does imp impress me about PS5, PS4 backwards compatibility. All right? We have not seen a console with straight-up backwards compatibility since the PlayStation 3, and the PS3 removed it. <laughs> it had it. It could, at one point, play PS1 and PS2 games, and then they took it out to cut costs. So, <clears throat> I'm excited. That's cool. That would mean you don't need to keep your PS4 lying around because your PS5 is going to play your PS4 games, right? That's a good thing, especially with the fact that most of my games are digital. I'll just be able to re-download a game right to the PS5 and play it right away rather than having to worry about, oh no, you know, I got to fucking get behind the disc or, you know, all that kind of shit. But, but, again, at the same time, I'm incredibly skeptical. I am. I'm incredibly skeptical about the whole deal. Also, the, the thing is, with the amount of crazy hardware they're talking is going to be in this P, this console, how much is it going to cost? You know, we're not in an era where people are going to dump $800 on a console. I just hate to say that. We're not. You know, there was a time when people would go nuts for that shit. I don't think we're in that era anymore. You know, people are looking for a price point of roughly around $400 tops for a new console. They're not really willing to go much above that. Maybe if they want to buy a few peripherals or whatever. Um, but really, you're not going to get a consumer base. Of, oh, PlayStation 5 is $799 US dollars. And you're like, well, you're a fucking idiot. No one's going to buy it, you know? Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. We'll see, okay? We'll see. But the initial impressions that I got... <clears throat> seriously, with the initial uh, impressions that I got, um, is that... They're focusing on graphics, 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 and I don't necessarily think graphics are going to cut it next generation. We basically got to find something else to innovate because graphics can only go so far, and the game developers aren't really caring about the graphics at this point anyway. It's like, 8K, so what, I need to buy a fucking 60, 80-inch TV now to even be, take advantage of it because if you use it on a smaller TV, you can't even really tell that it's 8K. You know what I mean? Like, it just seems ridiculous to me that we're going this far ahead. <clears throat> 
Beef Steak Tomatoes says, what about the SSD? I mean, yeah, the SSD's good. I mean, it's going to load a hell of a lot faster. In fact, the rumor is that Sony's going to be pushing game developers for instant loading, meaning they want games on the PS5 to basically not have to load. That you boot it, you play it, it's seamless, right? I mean, that's cool. That's obviously cool, and if they could do that, amazing. I'm not sold that they're going to do it. Again, I'm not sold that the game developers are going to utilize the technology made available to them in the culture that we live in of rush, 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 release, 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 hit that release date, make the money, make the money, and releasing unfinished games. I'm not sold that we're going to get games that are going to utilize all this stuff. So, okay. Continuing on, Last Rambo Charity says, if people really cared about what you play, they would register and vote on your website. I agree, but at the same time, what you have to understand is that there's a casual feeling. When it comes to uh, interactivity, when it comes to a streamer, um, most people who watch me are not going to take the extra 5 to 10 minutes to create a forum account and register on my forums in order to vote. I'm just saying, they're not going to. I'd probably say probably out of all the people who watch me, maybe 10% of the viewers would do that. All right? A lot of people are casual viewers. They'll come by, they'll watch me every once in a while, they'll throw a cheer or a tip every once in a while... But they don't want to invest a ton of time and effort into doing something. You know what I mean? Oh, if Phil's streaming and I can click here and just watch him, great. But if Phil wants me to vote and I have to click here and then I have to fill out a giant form of all my personal information, including an email address and all that, and then I have to wait for it to be confirmed by the website and then get the confirmation email, I got to click here to confirm and then I got to log in. And then finally, I can vote on a poll. Most people are going to say I'm not going to do that. Okay? I get that. And I don't blame them. I seriously don't blame them. Um... So that's why, even though I agree a controlled environment for polls works, the controlled environment, sadly, because it's controlled, needs hoops to jump through to get into it, and those hoops deter a giant amount of people who probably would participate. You know, I would even guess, if I remember, I think it was around like 450 people who voted overnight on this poll for World War Z, you know, to see World War Z. Um, I would guarantee you that if the same poll were on my forums, I would get between 30 to 50 people tops. That's it. You know, a tenth, if that. So. All right, Bradford, 13, 13, 13, 13, did a 200 bit cheer. He said, My birthday is next week. Well, congrats, Bradford. That is awesome. Happy bir happy early birthday. Um, and hopefully you have a good one. Hopefully, you, maybe you've got something special planned. Um, sadly, I didn't do anything this, this year for uh, my birthday at all. I was streaming, if you remember, um, Apex Legends. And then I was preparing for my trip to Connecticut. So I really did absolutely nothing for my birthday. Um, it is what it is, though, right? As you get older, birthdays end up not being so special. They just kind of end up being another day. So it is what it is. But I hope you have a good day. And the landscapers just turned on all their equipment. So I'm going to go close my window. Hold on. That's very loud. I swear to God... <laughs> I swear the landscapers know my schedule and purposely show up when I start. Because if you guys have been here, you know, over the years, since I've lived here in, in Washington, it seems like no matter what, when I start streaming is when the landscapers start. Because I used to stream much later. If you guys remember, I used to stream at noon or later is when I used to start my streams. And then, you know, in the past couple of years, I rolled the clock back and I now stream way earlier and way more in one day. But how hilarious is it? It used to be, you know, I would start streaming at noon and then they would turn their shit on. And now I start streaming at 10 and now they turn their shit on now. <laughs> <clears throat> oh my goodness. Okay. So thank you to Bradford who also resubbed for 16 months and says, I'm one week, I'm one week from today. It's one week from today and I love your content. All right. Very nice. All right. Um... Well, sadly, we've got another tr a couple trolls here, so I'm just gonna take care of uh, take care of the idiots, so that way they don't derail the stream chat. All right, they're out of here. Almighty Piggy, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for the sub. I talk Fortnite. Also, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for the sub. Um, Grayside Will did a hundred bit cheer. He says, "Do you think it's plausible to reach 600 subs without a bunch of gifted subs?" Honestly, yes, I do. I actually do think that it's viable, but it's not going to happen just willy-nilly. It's going to happen when new games release. Because typically what people what happens is people will come back when there's new games, right? Right now, there's nothing going on. World War Z is not going to bring in a ton of viewers. I know it's not. 
Um, I beat Sekiro, so all the viewership I was getting for that already is done with. And it's basically dead time until Tuesday. When Mortal Kombat 11 comes out, I guarantee that day we're going to see a, an increase in subs. When Days Gone comes out, I guarantee we're going to see an increase in subs. You see what I mean? But it always happens around the hype of a new release. And without the hype of a new release, it's very hard to bring in you know, new attention to the channel. So it could happen. We absolutely could hit 600 subs by the end of this month. If you guys haven't noticed, every day I've been back starting on Sunday, we've seen a ton of new subs every day. We already recovered all the subs that I lost during my time away, and we're growing steadily. So I am confident we could hit it. Am I guaranteeing that we're hitting it? No. But, you know, people need to be aware. We want this monthly goal to happen. We want to do a viewer's choice event. It's the first time I've ever done an open viewer's choice event like this that I'm planning. And right now, there's tons of benefits to subscribing to the channel. There's been a ridiculous amount of new emotes, including... The dab emote, the lean in ban emote, the objection emote, that's a two parter for the Phoenix Wright playthrough. You know, all these play emotes that I've added as a result of your guys' feedback and everything. So, great time to sub. You know, plus, you don't have to watch ads when I run them. I take ad breaks. And uh, you also um, get the chat crown to show how long you've been a subscriber, right? So, very nice. I think we could do it. Uh, shout out to Eternal Napalm. Who cheered said also they confirm 3D sound with the PS5 that will benefit gamers with headphones most. Also got our first tease of the new God of War yesterday from Santa Monica. Prepare for Ragnarok. Well, as for 3D sound, Sony claimed that the PSVR had 3D sound. And I used headphones. It says you any headphones will work with it because it's built the head the, the 3D sound hardware is built into the PSVR. Now I played a bunch of PSVR games. And I'll say some games utilized it and some games didn't. For example, if you remember that, um, what was it? What the hell was the name of the game? Um, oh, man. It was the shooter, the on-rail shooter, based on the survival horror game that I had played. I can't remember the fucking name of it. Anyone remember what it was called? <sighs> the on-rail shooter for PSVR where you're on a roller coaster and you're shooting all the monsters around you. Oh my, Until Dawn Rush of Blood. Thank you very much, Beefsteak Tomato. And also One Ton Hammer also jumped in there too. That game's audio was great. Like, there were enemies. All of a sudden, I would hear one behind me and spin around. There'd actually be an enemy behind me I had to shoot. And that was pretty cool. But compare that, okay, with Resident Evil 7. I played Resident Evil 7, and I could not discern elevation of audio. I could hear if there was an enemy behind me, but I couldn't tell was he on the top floor or the bottom floor of the mansion. Um... So, really, it's game-dependent. And, again, it's nice they're going to have 3D audio hardware built into the console. So, if you're a headphone user, maybe you're going to get really unique 3D audio with certain AAA games. But I get the feeling it's going to be another thing that some game developers are going to utilize and others are going to completely ignore. Um, it all depends. Now, as for God of War Ragnarok, that's cool. Uh, obviously excited for it. God of War was my game of the year last year. Absolutely loved it. And I like the reboot of the series, and I get the feeling the next one's going to be great, just like the last one. Um, plus, you know, the last one sold so well that now they're going to be able to sink a ton of time and resources into the new one. So, I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited for it. Um, I guess we'll see. But yeah, I am very excited for, obviously, God of War. Duh. One of the best games of the last decade. So... Your boy Jermaine says, sound is usually worked on last, even though it's vital to a great game. That's sad. That's really sad. That really is, you know? I agree. Audio, good audio can make a, or break a game. You could have a game that looks amazing, but if the audio sucks, you know, it could ruin the game experience. Or vice versa, having really awesome audio can make a game much better, um, even more so than you intend. You know, I can think of games with good soundtracks and stuff that actually made the game experience feel so much better. Like, Persona 5, prepare for the example, or the whole Persona series, but in particular Persona 5, that game has a kicking fucking soundtrack that keeps you like, da, 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 da. you know, you get into it. Same thing with Persona 4, you know, I like the, the all the, the music of those games gets you so into an RPG, and even though it's your 5 millionth repetitive fight, the music really keeps getting you pumped to get you amped to keep going, right? Um, you know, atmospheric or, or surround sound noise in a survival horror game in a first-person shooter... Again, can make or break the game, can make it feel really good. Or make it be shitty if, the, if it's not so good, right? And people are constantly sneaking up behind you and you can't tell because you can't hear. So, that's a shame. But, you know, 
definitely, definitely think sound design is a huge part of gaming. And by the way, as someone who I know that I have visually impaired viewers, you know, I'm sure they appreciate games with great sound design. In fact, probably the sound design is the reason why many of them can play games at all, right? Okay. <clears throat> all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think we finished with shout-outs. Let me go ahead, and I'm going to do a shout-out for the top cheers of the week. Um, and then we'll probably get started. So, thank you to the top 10 cheer contributors so far this week. Keep in mind, the, the week is young. We've still got through Sunday, but so far, so good. Thank you to everyone. We got, first of all, a triple cheer. A triple cheer. Let's try this again. A triple tie for a cheer uh, for eighth place here. We've got Judicious Echoes, Super Blind Man, and Insomniatic Meat. Wall tied for eighth place this week. Wahlberg, 336, is in seventh place, tied with Vote Democrat. So actually, technically, they're tied for sixth place. Um, Quack and Apple Peacock are tied for fourth place. In third place, we've got Yusuke 14K. And then a tie for first place. Good lord. There's been a lot of ties. But Firm High Five and Bishop of. Hold on, let me scroll over his name. Bishop of Mercy. So, from I-5 and Bishop of Mercy tied for the top spot this this week. No, There's no clear cheerer win, cheer winner this week so far. So. <laughs> What's up, 007 Blaine? Good to see ya. Lollerman is just cheer. says, you believe pre-streams are therapeutic in nature. You get to speak to your viewership, share what's going on with you, and get to unwind. I was always curious. Yeah, it's a great way to start the day. Here's why. Because if I didn't do a pre-stream, I'd just jump right into gameplay. What if I got something to talk about? What if there's something on my mind? What if there's a hot topic <clears throat> that happened overnight? It could be gaming news or whatever that I'm not aware of, right? And it's really these pre-streams that allow me to get that out. I can tell you about all the news and the schedule and everything. You guys tell me about stuff that's going on. I That's why I'd like, I really like doing these pre-streams. And as, as I said, you know, maybe that's why, quite frankly, Ask the King may end up kind of going the way of the dinosaur. Because I basically do a Q&A show every morning, whenever I start up, right? So there's really, you know, is there really a point to doing a, a full-on Q&A show every two months when I do Q&A every morning and most of your questions get answered right away, right? Um, <clears throat> I love it. And that's another thing. Like Some people say, you know, what happened to your podcast, Hate Live? What's the point of Hate Live? I don't need to do it because I talk with you guys every day. When I changed over to a full-on interactive streamer in 2017, I knew there were going to be big adjustments, and one of the biggest adjustments is having this interactivity with you guys every morning. So, <clears throat> naturally, by doing this, it's going to make other things extinct because it used to just be gameplay videos that are just the gameplay, and that's it. It wasn't interactivity. There was none of this. Now you're getting this every day, so what's the point of having the show is dedicated for it? You see what I mean? Uh, Kill Bill cheered and said, I'm hyped for the game. I love the choice. Curious if I should buy it, but I feel like it's going to eventually be a PSN free-to-play in a year or two. A year or two? <laughs> if if this game is how people are describing it, I would say this is going to be a free for PS Plus within a few months. No lie. Probably by the end of the year, World War Z will be free. Maybe around Halloween. Okay. All right, so... I think we've now covered everything. So I want to say thanks, everyone, so far for your contributions. Oh, actually, let's check sub count, because we do have a few people who sub. Let's see if the subs went up or down. Yeah, see? We're up to 507 subs. Told you guys. I told you, we're seeing very consistent sub growth. So I do feel that by the end of this month, we could hit 600 subs, especially with the new releases next week. I am feeling confident about it, okay? <clears throat> All right, guys, so... Um, thank you very much for your support. Shout out to Bradford, who has the current top cheer. No one's tipped yet, so can't give a shout out to a top tipper yet. But thanks, guys, very much. And, uh, let's give it a shot.